Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're back down at South County Auto Salon. Haven't been here in a while. This is gonna be two different people. You're gonna see Nick who does the build and then you're also gonna see Brandon later when we go for a drive. And Brandon's the one that owns the company and the vehicles. I know that these guys only build cool shit. So <laughs> Nick hits me up about a week ago. Hey man, you wanna shoot our blazer? Yes. Don't know what year it is, don't know what color it is, don't know if it's lifted, if it's dropped. I just know you guys do cool stuff, you know? It's a 1971 Chevy Blazer K5. Yep. This vehicle started out at a other shop, uh, Old Anvil in Orange, California. They took care of the chassis. It's a one-off chassis built for this vehicle. There's a gentleman that worked there, same time as I did, uh, CJ Fuller. He okay. did the whole chassis fab. He built the headers, their one-off headers, the one-off exhaust. And then a couple other guys from their team did some of the sheet metal work, like the engine bay that we'll look at shortly. Yeah. The rear wheel tubs, uh, modified the dash. And then after a while, the vehicle came here. Take it from where it was at that point, exactly. and then to get it to where we see it now. Exactly. You guys have been out already showing the vehicle, right? Definitely, so it's, yeah. its first showing was at a C10 intervention last okay. September. What was kind of cool about that is the year prior to that, we brought it midway through. The body was just laid on the chassis, no wiring, yeah. minimal plumbing. The following year, we were driving into the show. It was just, it was bitching. And then out of, I think there's 1,200 vehicles that show up to that show this took best to show top 50 almost everything you could get it took over there man. that's so rad recently we were down at a uh, good guys in del mar and it, i believe this took builder's choice over there as well too man so. builder's choice is a yeah. big one right yes it that's is. a big one god dang this engine bay is really bitching yeah man, man. The tubs are massive on here. Paul over at Old Anvil, his goal was that he wants full turning radius with this thing half inch off the ground. So when this thing's either laid all the way out or as low as you want it, you have your full turning Full lock to lock, radius. really. So there's no like, oh, there's the fender, oh, there's the tub. And I love how you did the matte finish against the gloss outside. You Definitely, know, that wasn't slick. that wasn't an easy thing to accomplish with our painters and just trying to get the, the nice clean line for like the fade from matte to clear. It just there's no hard tape line. It's all blended in nicely. So when those two meet, it's going to be a mess if you don't do it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it says it right there. You did an LSX in it. Yep, LSX 454 from GM Performance. The long block itself is all stock. We got this intake manifold all the way from a company in Australia, Plasma Man. We contacted them, 26 hours CNC program later, we get this in the mail and we're all just like, what did we do? <laughs> like, it's just bitching, you know what I mean? Yeah, it really is slick in those fuel rails. And then our pinstriper, his name's Ken, uh, he came and filled in all like the uh, engraving throughout here with the same color as a blazer, just oh, to add a little bit more touch, man. you know? And what do you make power-wise, you were saying um, before? We went to West Tech Performance for dyno. I believe it made like 517 horsepower and 540 torque to the wheels. Very happy with those numbers. And um, yeah. it's going through a 4060 heat trans built by the guys at a Westminster Performance Transmissions. Okay. Everything in there was done, build of parts, new clutch discs, everything, so. It's really, it's a cruiser. It's exactly. lay low and cruise and look sick, exactly. right? Exactly, it's not too loud or anything, so when you're in there, when windows up, you're not yeah. yelling at each other to fucking communicate. It's a two and a half inch stainless exhaust, true dual, no X-pipe, no H-pipe, mm -hmm. Borla excess mufflers, and it goes all the way out the back. So nice. What's the rear end on it? It is a Curry nine inch housing nice. with a strange third member, uh, 31 spline axles. All pretty the right standard, stuff. Yeah, pretty standard, yeah. but it does the job, man. You guys don't cut corners, exactly. man. I've been around you guys. You don't cut any corners. Brandon likes stuff done right, and, gonna, and you obviously do If as you're well. gonna do it, you gotta do it right, man. There's yeah. obviously many opportunities to cut corners when building a vehicle, but at the end of the day, the only one that suffers is the customer, you know what I mean? So That's right. You know, we've talked about it before. I'm not a builder, but I, I'm around enough of it that I always appreciate when mm -hmm. it's done right, and not only for the completed build, but also at some point, there is going to be serviceability stuff you're going to need exactly. to deal with. Exactly. Did you put your masters up under the dash, hidden away somewhere? Yeah, it looks bitching for a show car, but did you make it accessible, you right? God forbid like, you got to take a caliper off and bleed the brakes. Honestly. You know, yeah, man. Honestly. Speaking of brakes, looks like, I mean, Will would master, I'm guessing, Will would around the car. Yep, Will with six pistons up front, four pistons in the rear, mm -hmm. hydro boost system. Most of the time you'll see just a bunch of like a braided AN lines, but if you look down there, it's all hard lined yeah. down, and then it soft lines into the frame rail where, where it ties into the power steering pump and then the uh, rack. Yeah. Everything that can be hard lined is hard lined. Stainless, all XRP fittings, and. I mean, it's just so beautiful, the fitment of it. it it's oftentimes with vehicles like this, 
you want to see it with the body off, the OCD that comes of into course. play, right? It's such a satisfying thing when you see that level of perfection, you of know? Of course, man. The next thing I mean, the engine bay that brings that next level is it's managed by a Holley Dominator ECU. Nice. The real time consuming part was the whole engine wiring harness is by hand. It was a 15 foot flying lead. I made the whole harness. The coil packs are under the radiator. Notice you don't really see any plug wires. They're about three and a half feet long from the front tucked under, they don't burn off the headers, they don't, it's not Smart. a mess, you know? Smart. The A-arms as well as this chassis, that's all one-off custom yes. stuff, yeah, yeah? pretty much the complete rolling chassis is all one-off custom, man. And then what air are you running on this? Uh, the whole thing is managed by AccuWare, mm -hmm. E-Little Plus system. The controls are molded into the dash, height sensors, two fire compressors and a five gallon tank. I'm assuming it wasn't like an immaculate starter vehicle, so, like you might have had a little metal work to do on this thing? So when Brandon purchased it, the paint job was absolutely perfect. But uh, as the fabrication process went on, there were little issues that came up to where we decided we got to paint the vehicle. You know what I mean? I want to give a big thanks to my buddy Josh McGurr. He has a shop out in Anaheim. That guy has helped me so much on this build. So he uh, took this cowl and um, he shaved all like the vents up front, uh -huh. the wiper, uh -huh. the wiper provisions, and the antenna. Usually if you want that done, you got to go aftermarket and it's a fiberglass piece and they don't fit worth the shit. He took the time to make it right to where we put it on. It literally just fell right back into place. And that's wow. not an easy task to do, man. Yeah. The whole vehicle is PPF by a uh, on over at Ultimate Shield in, um, I believe, Anaheim as well. It has Marquee trim all the way around. Any of you guys that don't know what he's talking about, if you look at the trim on this, you see, I mean, the fitments, it ain't like it was from factory. No, Come on, dude, let's be honest. And... It's so much cleaner. And you said that was a good, the, well over two grand. Yeah, for the, it, it's yeah. not cheap, man. Again, yeah. you get all new hardware and stuff and it sets it off to the next level, man. How about, I'm guessing, same thing, door handles, even though it looks almost original? They're from a GSI out in Arizona. It's their billet handle and we got them raw, got them polished to go ahead and match with the whole chrome exterior on the vehicle, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. All new door rubbers, new wind wings, all new glass. Is this still original top? Yes. It is. Yes, okay. original top, okay. tons of body work to make it look presentable. And then uh, we come back here. Funny story, this is bumper number, I believe bumper number four. Going back to when this thing took its first maiden voyage, one issue we had was the chassis would only air up about three to four inches. So of course we were all just gung-ho and happy. We're driving it up in Sacramento for that C10 intervention show. Yeah. First big dip, catches the whole bumper, dents the quarter panels, everything. Oh you know man. I mean? Oh. So uh, we redid the mounts, spaced it out probably like three sixteenths of an inch and made much more rigid mounts. To overcome that airing up height, we made little cuffs off the rear bags. I believe they're like two and three eighths and that gets you up to like a five, six inch ride height to where you're safe. Approach and it lays out, dude. I mean, is that license plate touching the ground? Yes, sir. It, it is. is. No frame. It hits the rocker pretty much before anything. Wow. So you always got to look around before you lay it out, make sure there's no nuts and bolts or debris on the road, man. Wheel and tire, what are we looking at? Uh, they are they are race line wheels. I myself- You can barely even see the wheels down here. <laughs> yeah, they got a pretty good lip in the back. I do not know the exact wheel size, but uh, they're on Pirelli P0 tires. People but, are gonna go nutty for not knowing the wheel and tire size, no, so. Man. Sorry, you Bummer. guys. Bummer. Disappointed! While we're on questions that there is no accurate answer to, what's the color again? Um, <laughs> it's a secret, it's a secret. Everybody asks, but it's a secret. What Brandon said was you guys started with a factory GM color and then altered and altered and yeah. altered until you landed on, and I gotta say, the color combo on this is just beautiful, dude. It I works, mean, it is man. gorgeous. And then along with the green or teal, whatever you wanna call it, the white is, um, again, we started from another color and then uh, yeah. we see it in the sun, there's a light, light blue pearl in there and it just, it yeah, looks amazing, man. that's what Brandon was saying, was that this color originally had some red in it, so you yeah. guys pulled the red out and added in the blue. Yep. The color combo on this thing is just, like the best word I can come up with, this is gonna sound lame, you guys, but it's a lovely color. It Thanks, like is man. so, is that really bad to say lovely, Asad? <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Let's go look at your interior here, man. Let's This is as beautiful as the outside, without a question, man. Definitely, man. So the guys over at Automotive Entertainment OC in Huntington Beach, we kind of came to them with a pretty direct idea on what we wanted mm -hmm. and a, again, ridiculous timeline. And they delivered, man. Classic instruments, gauge panel. I did a steering column. 
a spark steering wheel. They made a custom one-off center console. These are TMI seats. And if you notice that cloud gray leather, it's all Porsche gray. Ah. And that's throughout the whole interior. Yeah, that's why it's so soft exactly. and really, really nice, man. Exactly. Yeah. Suede accents throughout. One of the processes they have over there is they'll 3D scan the whole vehicle. And all these panels are CNC routed cut out or 3D printed. Restomod Haymaker S system. They made this awesome center console to where it has the AccuWare E-Level controller built in. It says push button start and then those two are the window switches. Man, that's integrated really clean. What is this carpet? This is, um, I it's believe almost like the German square wheel. That's exactly what we were going for. I don't remember the exact name, forgive me, but um, it was very, very expensive. <laughs> and again, it, it's, it's more European expired, as you know. Very, very much so. Floor mats are made to uh, fit as well. And if you look at them, they have our logo on them too. This interior is really, really bitching. And by the way, super cool choice to leave this not go Alcantara or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? It, it, that would be too much in here, I think. Exactly. That, that was kind of something that Brandon and I went back and forth on. He mm. wanted to do an insert. If you bring that gray up here, I feel like you're going to feel suffocated. But then again, all the matte finding its way inside here. So you, I mean, sorry to say, but if you have this gloss, the glare on your exactly. face and the sun's going to be just awful. It's a good contrast. And like you just mentioned, it serves a purpose while you're at it. Yeah. Wow, this is so slick, bro. Definitely. And it even gets better in the back I've never even it. heard of these guys. They, what? A, I mean, sorry, uh, to the Automotive Entertainment OC, is that what it was? Yep, They're, they knocked it out I of mean, the park, I mean, that's a man. seriously bitchin' interior, dude. So let me go ahead and get into the back. The rear latch has been shaved. It's on the inside with the all-American billet latch. Oh, dude, that's slick. This whole, is this all wood? Yes, sir. It sure is, huh? It's a bedwood kit and then a... Uh, the stainless steel slats are still in there. This was a uh, back and forth we had with the interior guys with the timeline we gave them. It was kind of a crunch to make this work, but again, they pulled through and it works. Um, what was the timeline on it? Because you said you oh put them in a man, time crunch. I think this interior got wrapped up in under three months. They uh, knocked it out of the park, but no Boy, did they ever. So stoked. Did they ever, man. Under the bedwood, there is three 10 inch subwoofers. Another cool thing about Automotive Entertainment OC is they make their own speakers. And do these panels open up here to, yep. to access things? So up there, these are the ports for the sub box. These uh -huh. are actually serve purpose. And on this side, this one pops off. There's your jumper, because the batteries are nice and tucked down below. Then on and this all side, magnetic too, right? So yep. it pops right back into place. So bitching. And that's your fuel filler. That's your fuel filler right there. So, wow. So one thing that most people do with this, like a 67 to 72 C10 is they try and tuck the filler behind the taillight. You don't realize that the little nozzle doesn't really fit in there very well. It's a really weird angle. And then you're sitting there for 30 minutes. Trying pumping. to get five gallons in the car. Exactly. This <laughs> one, you put the nozzle in there, you walk away and it's fine, man. So there's function behind the formula. Yeah, no, I dig it. And then your logo again here. Yep, and that lights up with the LED and stuff. <laughs> I look forward to you guys meeting Brandon. You'll meet him in a few minutes when we go for a drive. But he was telling me that uh, now that it's done, he's gonna show it a bit more and then sell it and move on to what's next. Yep. But he seems like he enjoys the process more than necessarily the finished product. Oh, 100%. That, <laughs> I, I think that's, that's why him and I jive pretty well, is just we... Because you dig the process. Yeah, we get up on yeah. the build. When it's yeah. done, cool. And then on to the next one. I'm man. so opposite, dude. I don't want to have anything to do with the getting it to here part. That's the fun part. I just part. want to get in the front seat and go for a drive or a ride. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> the fun part, man. Come on. But that's why I'm just an enthusiast guy that digs shooting cars, getting in them. Fair. You're a builder, right? It makes total sense that we're going to have a different love for these vehicles. And, and this is the part I dig is finding all these little things that were thought about. Like, yeah, it makes sense to have access to, to your battery right there. Exactly. It makes sense to have your fill here it's it's somebody's gonna score a bitch and turn the key or not turn the key but push the button and go drive it there down the go. road because yep. it's all driver now right yes sir he has a couple hundred miles on it as of right now it was a little bit of a trailer queen for a minute going sure. show to show we sure was first done yeah but i think it got 15 minutes and now he's enjoying it man so well if there's nothing else on it dude we'll do our camera stuff and then i'll introduce you guys to brandon the owner of it and we'll take it for a drive sounds good to me Guys, so I want to introduce you to Brandon. Brandon's the owner of South Coast Auto Salon. So you guys, I asked Nick during the interview about the build of the vehicle. 
wheel and tire sizes, Nick had the brilliant answer of, shit, I don't know. What do you... Yeah, so we wanted to do, uh, well, we couldn't rotate, but we definitely wanted to keep the same size all the way around. So we did a 22 by eight and a half in the front because we went to with such big brakes and a 22 by 12. So we got a 265 on the front and a 335 rear. So, so great. It's so fitting of the look. I mean, a, a 20s would look weird on this. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I tell you, dude, you see a lot of blazers. This thing's, this thing's exceptional. Man, I built so many cars like we were talking about earlier. You know, I don't, I, a lot of people, if you're a car guy, you kind of understand how it is. You, you do all this for that trophy, right? A couple hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar bills for a five dollar trophy. But, <laughs> and uh, getting that that trophy is almost the best feeling in the real. It's like winning, being an Olympian, you know. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah, totally, dude. Yep. Hey, you guys, Brandon actually has a day job that affords him a really fun hobby. But I think it's cool what you're doing here. That you're just building stuff you like. You're not taking in the low dollar customer, right? That maybe wants an LS swap or something. We tried that, right? We For the first three years, really, it was all my cars. You know, you shot a couple of them. Yep. We were winning shows, and people were like, oh, I want to build some stuff. And I was telling Nick, I'm like, let's hire some more employees, and let's bring in all these cars. And we were just working on it. It's not, I'm not talking shit on anybody, but it just wasn't what we wanted to do, yep. right? I wanted to build the baddish stuff, and it just took the joy out of it. So for the rest of this year, we've been wrapping up everything, and uh, we're going back to a fix. We'll do a couple builds a year, Yep. And build my own stuff. That's really what the oh, shop was for. Is I wanted to stuff. build my own cars, you know. Okay, I know I talked with Nick about this. Both of you seem to align on that you enjoy the process perhaps more than the finished product. Like you like I get it, you like the finished product. Yeah. But it gets to this point you're like, Yeah, for the right money I'll sell it. Yeah, I'm not attached to anything. Do you have any that you've had for years? No. <laughs> This thing sounds so good. When it hits that high gear, it wants to go. I can tell. This thing drives great on the freeway too. I've been on the toll road. I kind of stay away from all the cars, but I mean, I'm, we're in the lowest setting right now. Are we really? Yeah, we're like an inch off the ground. Wow, you wouldn't know it, dude. It feels really so that, comfortable. There's drive high. So when you go into that second setting, what's that, like four inches, three uh, inches, somewhere around there? My body's lower than my frame, so I'm exactly five and a half inches off the ground. And then the top setting, so then it comes up even more. Yeah, locked up, I think I get like seven and a half inches off the ground. Got it. So it's just enough to get in the driveway. Let's say somebody sees this video or a post that you guys have done somewhere and somebody hits you up today, 300 grand. Do you sell it today? I'll sell it today. <laughs> Three is your bottom on this car. And you said you're into it for more than that. I'm over three in it. Not even including the, the amount of hours that we can't even clock and add that we've put into this thing. We have thousands of hours, like just trying to get it done. It looks like a thousands of hours vehicle, bro. I mean, it genuinely does. Yeah, cruise is nice, bro. I'm not typically a big bags guy, but the, but the ride on this, you know, and I know you know what I mean, dude. Some bag vehicles, I don't know enough about why it does it, but it's like bumpy. It feels like crap on the road. Old Anvil, they'd actually, he's actually a really smart guy. Like he he figured out the articulations and then all the pivot angles. They built the upper and lower control arms. Yeah. CJ Fuller's the one that actually did all the work, but besides the labor, I mean the design works is, is what really they laid it down. Paul's a, Paul's a good guy. Yeah, dude, I'd have a hard time not driving all this this thing all the time. This thing's rad. The one thing that keeps jumping to me is sitting in here is how good this interior is. This whole panel that they built, this whole center console, the fitment of this, usually that big screen should look way out of place in here, but it doesn't, you know? What a beautiful, beautiful when interior. When we sat down with them, I was giving them my vision, and when they're like, hey, we're gonna laser sprint this, they put all the little, the little dots and they kind of came in and they scanned and, and I was watching them build everything on the computer. Like that bag, I took, that's out of an end of a C10, I shortened it and I was like, and watching it be built on a computer, you're like, oh, that looks cool, but it's all three dimensional. Then all of a sudden they're sending me photos as they're, they mock it up and you're like, man, that's a mission. Yeah. So like no one's ever going to have this. And like this thing, the stereo in here bangs. 
speakers and the kick pedal like a newer car. It all tucked and hidden away, like nothing. The sub ports are coming out of the sides. Like, they just did a really good job. They weren't cheap, but oh, quality's bad. not cheap, right? Like that's. <laughs> I mean, I'm good at ballparking costs. Let's see how close I get on this. I'm guessing on this interior, including the audio, 65, 75? 50. 50, okay. So I highballed it then. Actually, yeah. that's. But I actually, it looks yeah. like a sixty-five to seventy-five thousand dollar interior. Well, I thought I got a good deal at fifty thousand. I'd say so. And this is another one. You know, it's it's funny. There's so many options for steering wheels. Spark Industries one I'm starting to see more and more of. And I get. I mean, tell me that's not a full Euro wheel right there. They're doing a great job. They have so many great steering wheels, and they make so many different finishes from chrome to stainless. <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing, right. bud? Thank you. Boy, I'll bet that's non-stop when you drive this thing. Yeah, see, I love that. Like, that's... It's fun, right? It's just... And by the way, it's not just fun for you. It's fun for him. He got to see something fucking rad, right? Yeah, fucking nice truck, bro. God dang. I know, I, I mean, I, like, I keep saying it, but it's... No, I appreciate that. The hours that Nick put into this thing, most people don't even grasp. Like, people are like, I want that. And they just... To get this is just hours on top of hours to make sure everything's perfect i mean making those hard lines and everything on this you know showing you the frame it's perfectly symmetric on both sides yep trans fan oil cooling fan we did it so it's perfect there was a little bit of trial and error nope i don't like that redo it no nope, we want that and you're not even underneath you're never going to see that but i debuted first the frame that we brought out and then we debuted it with just the body with nothing else and no interior on raw so i kind of did stages yeah this is really the biggest build for our shop like this is really getting us even though the c30 you guys did the 29 no 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 this is not taking anything away from those but this is way next level dude and this I is mean, what this, all we want to build moving forward this is our future that's and that's i, I love it dude i think that's great So now we're about an inch off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I love what Nick was telling me about the, you know, obviously your inner fenders, inner tubs are massive, but the idea that you can ride in this setting and actually turn your wheel. Yeah. It's like he has to smile to me. <laughs> yeah. That little, that little panic mode. It's all it takes. It's all it takes. Just feeling the little bit of acceleration, that low torque, the sound. Even slamming it right, like I'm yeah. just I'm concerned. I like to beat my shit up. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. See, but you nail it, it wants to go. It's she's aggressive. This thing's bitching, bro. This is really no, I nice, appreciate man. it. Thank you. The Soco Auto Salon guys, we've shot three of their vehicles now and each one of their builds, in my opinion, has elevated and elevated. This Blazer, I mean, you guys look at it. It is truly stunning. Someone's gonna score buying this one. Yeah, it's a big ticket, but it's a big ticket build. So someone's definitely gonna score on this. That's it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I, I definitely am stoked we got to shoot with Brandon and Nick again. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, you guys, later.